Welcome to the Nokia Core User Group 2023. I'm Tad East, Head of Advanced Technology for Core Networks, and it's my pleasure today to show you a sneak peek of something we're calling Innovation as a Service. To get started with Innovation as a Service, the first thing that's required is to purchase a subscription of time. This could be 40 hours, 100 hours, or 200 hours. Once we have our time, we can move over to our catalog. And these are pre-engineered starting points that allow us to very quickly deploy, whether it be a 5G core, 5G packet core, or a combination 4 and 5G. For today, I'm gonna to grab a 5G SA core and drag it onto my canvas. The next step is to do the initial day zero configuration with the PLMN, set up your access point and your tracking areas. We go to advanced options, and we have the option to set the base site or they'll be used for this deployment to avoid IP conflicts. We can move on to bring your own IP address, and this allows you to bring your own IP block for the N6 interface. And then finally, we can set up the test subscribers so this core has a handful of subscribers provisioned once it's deployed. Now we need to talk about how we're gonna to connect to this core. You have two options. You can use a VPN, which you can configure, or we can do direct connect. Now that we have this core, we can decide do we want to deploy it? Do we want to deploy and save? Or strictly just save it to the library? So I'm going to go back and look at one that I've already saved into the library and show you how easy it is to recall a configuration. So I go up to the catalog. I select my starting point. Go to the library. Grab a configuration. And you can see I can very quickly recall a configuration and now I can deploy this core. I'm going to switch to a core that I already have deployed. So once a core is deployed, you can see the various network functions that have been deployed, as well as I can mouse over, see the status and the versions of the network functions that were deployed. It also tells me how to integrate. So the first step would be to set up the VPN tunnel, and it gives me my two tunnel endpoints for connecting to this core, as well as the AMF IP address that needs to be defined on the GNODE-B. Once I do this, the GNODE-B will come up on air and we can make calls with those test subscribers that we provisioned. Now let's start talking about what we can actually do with this core. So it's very easy to change and manipulate the, with this core with something that we call intent-based automation. So in this case, I'm gonna grab something that's relatively complex called URSP or UE route selection policy, and I'm gonna drag it onto this running environment. And it's gonna step me through the process of setting URSP. What's gonna happen here is it's gonna automatically configure the AMF, the NPC, the SDL, the SMF, and the UPF. All I have to do is follow the template, fill out the required information, so select the subscribers I wish the provision, and go ahead and hit apply. So now it'll take a couple minutes, and behind the scenes, we're actually provisioning URSP on this core that we deployed just moments ago. Now, as I'm making changes, I can save these changes back to my library at any time. So I can scroll back. And we've added a very convenient feature here that allows you to compare and see the differences between what your current environment is running versus one that's been deployed previously. So I'm just gonna drag one out and I can scroll down very quickly and it'll show me the changes between what I'm currently running versus what's saved in this configuration in my library. Another very valuable feature we've added under console is insight into the environment that's currently running. You can execute Kubernetes commands. I can select on namespaces, for example. I can execute the commands, and very quickly I get the output of what's running on this environment. Another very useful tool is the ability to execute CLI commands, but from a menu driven. For example, I can run the PD, for example, I can do PDN context. We'll execute this command, and it'll show me all the contexts that are currently running on this SMF. As we get a little more exotic, I can look at logs. I can pick the AMF, I can select which pod I'm interested in, in the container, and then how long I'd like to stream this log for. So I'm just gonna set this for 10 seconds. And then finally, something a little more interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pop out this window. We'll slide it over here. And I'm gonna run a packet capture. In this case, we'll select traces, trace type by MZ, which phone I'm interested in. I'm gonna go ahead and start the trace. And 
And now I'm going to start the stream of the trace back to the UI here. And you can see that we're actually writing the trace to the protocol monitor log, but piping it over to the message flow command to do all the debug. I'm going to select a phone. In this case, I'm going to select 501, which is one of my test subscribers. I'm going to take the phone out of airplane mode. And as I do, we'll see the actual attach taking place on the AMF via the packet capture. So that's a quick introduction to Innovation as a Service, where you can deploy one or multiple cores, you can save your configuration, you can recall it at a later date, and you're only charged for the actual time that you use. I've just shown you an early look of Innovation as a Service. What we're looking for right now is a couple customers who would like to help shape and refine the direction of this. So if you see it useful, for quickly spinning up labs that you can do feature and functionality testing, third-party integration testing, and augment your own lab capacity, please reach out to us. And thank you. I'm Ted East.